and you can also use pulse width <coughs> modulation for controlling servo motors in robotic applications things like that of course we won't be covering applications on that frequency and duty cycle measurement now the microcontroller you, you can like the pwm means you're creating the pulse width right the square wave the, you're controlling the pulse width that's what it means pulse width modulation you can that means it is actually generating the signal so pic can also be used to generate pulse width and it can also be used to uh, to receive input and to measure the frequency and duty cycle that means wherever you can use the microcontroller to as a measurement tool so you can have a signal generator and you can connect to one of the pins of the microcontroller and because let's say for example you have a square wave right the square wave you have the high and low and then the high right from one high to one high is that's one period so you can use it the, the, the time module to detect the first one and then the subsequent one so you will capture this time and capture this time and you can get the time right from there you can get the frequency generation of waveforms with certain frequency and duty cycle so pulse wave modulation is have a specific usage that means they only got uh, one or two pins which is known as a CCP pin <coughs> capture compare and also pulse width modulation those pins only can be used to generate pwm signals but any other pins you can also use to generate waveforms with certain frequency and duty cycle that means you can connect to normal port b pin 0 and you can generate square wave signal how do you generate square wave signal how do you generate square wave signal basically logic 1 and 0 right let's say for example if I want you all to generate a square wave signal of 1 kilohertz, how? One? I want you all to generate a frequency of square wave signal of 1 kilohertz. How do you want to do that? What is the duration for 1 kilohertz? One millisecond. Huh? One, 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 one millisecond. So it's one millisecond. So what? What is the one millisecond? It's the duration. Right? So you can actually use the duration to turn on and off, right? So how how long you must on and how long you must off? Yes, half of. Second, right? Because that one millisecond is one period which is up and down. So that is one whole which is divided into two means. Half, half. So half you on, half you. So that will generate one kilohertz signal. Simple. Time references. You can use this for reference time referencing. Different different event you can actually log the time. The event counting you can also use it as a counter. Uh, each time signal is coming in, it will increase the uh, counter. Okay, one time, two time, three times. So you can use to log number of event occurring. For example, you 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 wanted to do a attendance system, so you put a sensor and you connect to the the timer module, but you configure it as a counter. So each time a student pass in. Assuming that only one entrance, the other one is exit. So you make sure only person enters here. So when a student comes in each time, the, the sensor is being disturbed. Uh, disturbed means as in the logic change, it will increase by one. So automatically you can take the number of attendants. This is a simple basic concept. You don't apply it because students always tend to put one leg and put another leg. <laughs> always do that, right? And then there are so many other applications when you come with respect to time. Is there any other question so far? So let us actually look at the PIC 18 timer system. So a PIC 18 microcontroller may have up to 5 timers. <coughs> timer 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Take note that timer 0, timer 1 and timer 3 are 16 bit timers. And timer 2 and timer 4 are 8 bits. 
we will see the difference between 8 bits and 16 bits. I'll explain that later. So this is what I uh, mentioned about uh, PIC 18 may have 1, 2 or 5 CCP module. CCP actually stands for Capture, Compare and Policy Modulation. We have certain pins with uh, certain functions. So each module, that pin, you can actually configure to perform capture, compare or PWM, this policy modulation function. In capture operation, the CCP module copies the content of timer into capture register on a signal edge. So that means you want to find out from one signal to another signal. Like just now I mentioned that right, you want to capture what is the duration. So you can use the capture. It will capture the first logic one and the second logic one. So you get whole duration. And then you have the compare operation. Compare operation is something like you set a particular timer, it will actually benchmark, has the time reached this particular duration or not. So once the timer reaches this, uh, then you can use it for interrupt. So that is comparing. You have set a time. Every this time you should do something. So your timer will start to increase and each time you will compare. Has it reached this, this duration, the required duration or not? The moment it reaches, you compare each time you compare the, the moment is equal, okay, you do something. And then the PWM mode can be configured to generate a waveform with certain frequency and duty cycle. This is what I said you can use to control so motor, how many angles you need to move, uh, intensity, light intensity, the speed of motor. So you can use a lot of application for that. Okay? Any question up to this point? So let us actually start with timer zero. So this is how timer zero looks like. But don't worry. We'll make it more simple. F F F 
So time one zero means it has T zero C O N. I put it top on. Top on register. C. This is the top on. Okay, this is actually the token register. This is because for this is for the timer zero condition register. Each timer has its own conditional register. So timer zero means token. Timer one means I call it icon. Timer two means I call it icon. Name sound funny, but you get the message right. So here you will see a very big sound. Here is where you need to configure. Look at bit number seven. This is timer zero on. So you want to on or off? On. So always this will be one. See the second one. Timer zero eight bit. If it's zero means configure sixteen bit. One means configure eight bit. Sixteen or eight? Sixteen. Sixteen means zero. So that means one. So far this is one. Zero. This is zero. And then you have timer zero clock select. Now this one. Is you gonna use instruction cycle clock? You're not using transition on uh, timer zero CK input pin. This pin is used as input. That means when you this timer can also be configured as counter. Next slide. Yes. Timer zero can operate as a timer or as a counter. So timer means like normal timer. Counter means the T zero CK I pin, the clock input pin. You need to connect a switch. So each time you press a switch, the timer zero content. This one you saw right. This one will increase by one. So in other words, each time you press, it increase, increase, increase. So this is as a counter. Have you seen the digital counter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The road they used to use to do the survey, road survey and things like that. Yes. So that is something like this. So for now, uh, we are not using the timer as a Timer. We are using it. Sorry, not using it as a counter. We are using it as a timer. So when the clock source is the instruction cycle clock, it operates as timer. That means whenever you are using the instruction cycle clock, the internal clock cycle, you are using it as a timer because timer needs a base frequency, right? So the it should be from the instruction cycle clock. When the clock source, that means the tick, that the clock source, the each tick comes. As from the T0 CKI pin, it operates as counter because now the tick is coming from the external switch. Each time you press, you increase that timer. Yeah, you increase this content. But the, but the earlier one, when you operate as timer, the instruction cycle, you know, whatever frequency crystal that you're using, based on that uh, frequency, it will increase based on the speed. Every click is actually determined. Depends on your frequency that you're using. So if you have a very high frequency, very fast. I mean, duration will be short, so it'll be very fast. Each tick is very fast. If you have low frequency, it'll be tag, tag. Each, do you understand? But that is happening internally because that is using as a timer. If you're using as a counter, of course the clock source should come from external. Thank 
here, in this one, is so, you have a choice. You have a choice. You can either choose please get a 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8, 2, 5, 6. These are the free scalars that you can choose. So which free scalar you want to choose? 16. Why is it this one? 1 over 2, 5, 6. Huh? Okay, okay. You take this one and pop on half. 16. So, put here. 16. Now, how many unknowns you have? One Can you calculate what is the clock cycle? Everyone use calculator, so the same thing you have to do for one If you don't do it now, I will have to calculate every instant. Yeah.
after 50,000 clock cycles, right? Because the only thing that that indicates end of time is this rollover. Rollover is the one which indicates that the time is up. So how do you actually configure this timer to indicate after 50,000 clock cycles you want the flag to become one? How can you actually do that? So you see that this is actually the higher range, right? 65,535. So we need to minus 50,000. 65,000 minus 50,000, what do you get? From here to here is how many? Box cycle? So what you have to do, this is the value. This is the value that you need to go inside here. value inside here, the timer will calculate from whatever value is inside the timer. So how do you convert 65,535 into hex? What's the value in hex? Now we on the timer. 
Now, immediately after you turning on the timer, actually two ways you can do. You can load the value first. My style is I always like to load the value first. Which is loading VC to timer zero high. And moving A, AF to timer zero low. I always prefer to load the values first. And then, I would like to on the timer. But it doesn't matter. Then you may say, sir, here already on already, so wouldn't it start counting? But when it starts counting, immediately you already load the value. So when you up, update the value, it will start to count from the updated value, which is 3CEF. So first thing, you need to on the timer, configure the timer. The second thing, you need to load the value from what value should start to count. The third step is, you must clear the flag. And then what do you do? You check for the flag. Take note that why we are checking for the flag? Because we are using timer as in, uh, sorry as a delay. We are just using it as a delay. Until uh, unless if you configure timer zero as interrupt, the flag which becomes one, it will not generate interrupt. The flag will just become one when it's when it's rolled over. So when we are using it as a delay. We take advantage of that flag to indicate end of time. So what do you do? Configure, load the value, clear the flag. What do you do? You wait for the, so you see, skip is set. As long as it's set, wait. So how long it will wait? It will wait until it's rolled over. When it's rolled over, the flag will become one. So it will not, it will skip when it's set. So of course this one, forget it. Because we just want to do 100 millisecond only, right? So, when you finish me, what's supposed to do? Return. This delay structure has the same structure. It is like this. The only thing that will change is this one, or this two value, or the timer that you are using. Where is the issue? So, this is a delay subroutine. Any question up to this point? <coughs> from the 1000 zero, 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 yeah. one, one, that one's 83 yeah. but then why must it enter T con? why was it what? why does it enter T con? Uh, T0 con? because we are dealing with timer 0 that means if it's let's say timer 1 is a different address already timer 1 is T1 con T con, con. as I mentioned every timer has its own conditional register just now what we saw is for timer 0, timer zero. The same principle for timer 1, maybe the only thing the bit may have been rearranged differently. So can I go to the next one? So it's like changes in following the exact question. Write a subroutine to create a time value that is equal to 100 millisecond times the content of product and register. What it means? What it means? That the product L is actually a multiplier. For example, if you want 500 milliseconds, what should be the content of product L? 5. As simple as that. So how do you actually call the subroutine if that's the case? So let's say if you have your main program here, you write something, then you can actually move little value. 5, you can move it to product 
plus L and then you call the what's the name of the substitute delay, right? Delay. So when you call delay, so actually this concept we have done before, right? I told you like if you want to have a multiple of a loop, you just loopify the loop, right? You multiply the loop. So what do you do? You just decrease this one. Otherwise, branch loop B, which should come back here. Okay, this is the reason why they actually put the awning, the primer zero on top. Because when you want to multiply again and again, you don't need to keep it, keep on, keep noting back these two values only. So like just now, if just one go only, yes, then you can put this down, no problem. But if you want to make it like a multiplying thing, better to put the configuration of clock on, on top and then loading the value clear and then check for the flag. So decrease, if you see, do we load any value into product L here? Do we load any value into product L here? So where does it get this value from? In the main program, nah. the main program you load 5 first, then you call the subroutine, right? So when you call the subroutine, you what you gonna do? You just add this one. Usually loop always have a sandwich thing, right? On top you load the value, down here you decrease. But you already load the value before you call the subroutine. So here what you do at the end, you just decrease, skip not zero. I mean skip is zero. As long as it's not zero, you branch to. That means you load again the values to ensure that the second hundred millisecond happens. Like that each time. If you put 5, it happened 5 times, which means you have a total delay of 500 minutes again. This one also has the same structure. Any question on this? So whenever you are using a timer as a delay, it always has this structure. Configure the timer register, load the value of the clock cycle, clear the flag, always bit test the flag and wait for the flag to become 1. If you are just doing a fixed uh, delay, when the flag becomes 1, you go out, like how we did the first example. If you are going to make it a multiplier of a delay, then you can do, you can add this two line to make it uh, as a multiplying loop. So whatever value you need to load in the main program, and then you call a subroutine and the subroutine will run that number of times. So in this case, if you want 500, just load 5. If you want 1 second, you load 10. Any question? This is the very the easy here. Do you find it difficult? Memorize what? Structure. Don't memorize the structure, understand the structure. See, if you should understand the concept of it, then it will work well. If you memorize, trust me, when you are panic, you will forget. The moment you enter into the examination, actually entering the examination hall is not a big thing. Your friends only. So study the one, no la. You can start panicking. <laughs> Actually, before your final, before your final, you should unfriend all your friends. <laughs> Go like a Zoro solo lone ranger in the final examination. Now, after that, you can add all the friends. But then don't add immediately because hey, what did you do for this one? Huh? I did like this. Hey, wrong, you know. <laughs> then for the next exam, you will be studying. Get fever. <laughs> Any question on this? So this is using Python as That's the Let's take five. Then we will see how to use Python as a Can someone uh, stop the recording?